All right, we're going to go through the properties of matter uh, review. First thing says fill in with definite or indefinite. I'm just going to use D or ID. For a solid, the shape is definite and the volume is definite. Always says this is solid or have a definite shape, meaning they have a shape and a volume. For liquids, they're always going to take the shape of the container that they're in, so we're going to put indefinite for shape, but they always have the same volume, so we're going to put definite. For gases, they will expand to whatever container they're in. So if they're in a room, they're going to expand through the whole room. If you open the door, it's going to go out through the door. So their shape is indefinite, and their volume is indefinite because they are not contained into a specific area. We're next going to move into phase changes. For the phase changes, uh, the first one is solid to liquid, uh, which I'm hoping everybody knows is melting. Now endothermic or exothermic, endothermic means energy goes in, exothermic means energy goes out. For energy to go in, that would mean that the molecules would speed up. In this case, going from a solid to a liquid, the molecules do speed up and they start to move around more, which means that they gained energy. So that means that this is endo. The opposite of that, going from a liquid to a solid, is freezing. So we'll say freezing. Freezing, the liquid has more energy, it's moving around more, and the solid has less. So we lost energy to go from a liquid to a solid, so that's exothermic. From a liquid to a gas is vaporization. We're going from a less ordered and um, not moving around as much liquid to a more, um, or sorry, an or more ordered liquid that's not moving around as much to a less ordered gas. So we gain energy to do that, and we go endothermic. The opposite of this is condensation, and that's going to be exothermic because the gas is losing energy to become a liquid. From a solid to a gas is what we saw with dry ice. This is a sublimation. And to go from sublimation, to go from a solid to a gas, you're going from something very ordered to something not ordered basically at all. Um, so you're going to go endothermic. You have to gain energy for that to happen. For number three, and what's a physical property, um, for these I'm going to try and not write out the whole thing just for time's sake, um, but a physical proper, property is uh, something that can be met, um, observed or measured without changing what the substance is. Um, so list, listing out some examples of physical properties, um, these are in the notes as well, but you have things like hardness, density, color, I'm not going to write all these out, color, uh, specific heat, boiling point, melting point, conductivity, uh, malleability, pounding it down the street, ductility, pulling it out so it's longer, um, hardness, uh, all physical properties. The big thing is number five. Can a physical property be used to identify a substance? Yes. A chemical property is an ability of a substance to react to a specific chemical change. So that really comes from the properties part if you watch this when, as we write it out. That's things like, will it react with acid? Is it flammable? So when we set it on fire, will it actually go? Um, will it oxidize, meaning will it react with oxygen? So the common thing that people think about is rusting. Um, you know, will, if we throw it in a base, will it react? So it, Anything that you are saying, if I add something, will it react? That is a chemical property or chemical change. Can a chemical property be used to identify a substance? No. The reason why, there's lots of things that you can set on fire. There's lots of things that react with an acid. That's not going to tell you specifically what's going on. As we go down here to number nine, describe the difference between element, compound, and mixture. An element is all one type of atom. A compound is two or more types of atoms chemically combined, and a mixture is two or more substances that are mixed, and I try not to use it, but they are blended together, not chemically combined. Number 10, can an element be decomposed by chemical means? No, you cannot break down an element any further than it is. Can a compound? Yes, you can break a compound down by chemical means. For number 11, we'll draw that out actually, it says draw a solid liquid gas. A solid, you want to draw nice and ordered. Oops. So nice and ordered. Liquids, we're starting to get a little bit further apart, but still fairly close. And gases were really spreading out as we do that. Okay? So solid, liquid, gas. What is the difference between a homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture? And give an example. 
homogeneous mixture is the same throughout. Um, it's also called, well, we'll get to that in number 13, but it's also called a solution. Um, think about Kool-Aid. You don't see sugar in water. You see one thing, which is Kool-Aid. A heterogeneous mixture is something like chicken noodle soup. You can see all the different parts when you look at it, and that's the way to look at it. Homogeneous will look the same throughout. Heterogeneous will look different. So number 13 I already said is another name for a homogeneous mixture is a solution. That would be Kool-Aid, salt water, that kind of thing. 14, the law of conservation of matter says that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. So basically, matter cannot magically disappear. For number 15, you're going to use the Q equals MC delta T. So you have Q equals MC delta T. In this problem, you're looking for how much heat, so you're looking for Q. The mass is 200. The C value is 4.184. And the change in temperature is 31 minus 23, which is 8. When you multiply those out, you get 6694.4 joules. For number 16, four signs of a chemical change, you're looking for a change in heat, so either hotter or cooler, a change in color, production of a gas, which usually means bubbles, or the formation of a precipitate, which is a solid that forms when you mix two liquids together. For 17, the heat of vaporization is the heat needed to go between a liquid and a gas. So either going from a liquid to a gas, which is vaporization, or going from a gas to a liquid, which is condensation. But how much heat is needed? Heat of fusion is how much heat is needed to go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. So on 18 now, labeling those on a graph, we need to say where the phase changes are, where the heat of fusion, heat of vaporization, melting and boiling points. Okay, so I'm going to start right here, point B, right where we start going from, this is a solid, this is a liquid, this is a gas. Right when we start to go from a solid to a liquid, that is the melting point. This distance right here from B to C is the heat of, I'm just going to put fusion, sorry I'm really writing bad. Um, and this right here is the phase change, this flat line. We now want the, the boiling point. The boiling point is when a liquid starts to become a gas. So that is right here, D. We'll call that the boiling point. That makes this amount of energy here from D to E, that is my heat of vaporization. And then that distance, that line between D and E, is the phase change. If you have any other questions, make sure you ask before we take the test.